You know, I already know that there's been some some puzzled looks about, I mean, from others, not any of you guys, but puzzled looks like, why can't you go out to Arkansas to knock on doors? Like, why can't you do that in Iowa? Why can't you do that in Kansas City? Which we do. And uh, some even, uh, you know, as we've heard, have kind of criticized that and everything. But uh, interesting uh, to this afternoon's message is, type, is titled Churches Helping Churches. Churches help churches helping churches. Now I've heard this a lot that churches birth churches. Have you ever heard that? Like this, how you start a new church, you get a church, and that church births new churches, right? Which is a, it's a great concept. I think it's a biblical concept when churches start other churches. But there's also a principle that we that we see throughout the Bible and makes common it's common sense if you think about it, that a church would just help be an assistant to another church. That, that's like-minded and all that kind of stuff. And so I think we see that a little bit here in this passage. Now, uh, I've been saying a lot lately, and obviously I believe it's true, that churches should be independent. You know, there's no doubt about that. I believe that's, that's clear in the Bible. When we are a, 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 a family, you know, I've been mentioning that a lot lately. We're like a family here, a separate family in a way, independent on our own, self-sufficient, all that kind of stuff. And that's the idea of a church, right? So this is going to be a little bit of an opposite nature uh, this afternoon because even though we're a family, we would help out another church, which essentially is the same family. See what I'm saying? If they're like-minded, they're saved, brothers and sisters in Christ, essentially the same family. No, I'm not a universal church. I believe in a local church. But this is other brothers and sisters that are doing the same thing somewhere else, right, in, in another church. So there's this con this principle of helping other churches, it's a beautiful thing, really, when a church steps in, helps another church, uh, and so I think our text gives us a little bit of an insight into this principle. If you go back down to verse 22, Romans 15, 22, you see he's talking to the Romans, obviously, and he says, for which cause also I have been much hindered from coming unto you, but now, having no more place in these parts, and having a great desire of these many years to come unto you, uh, whensoever I take my journey into Spain, I will come to you, for I trust to see you in my journey, and to be brought on my way uh, thither, thitherward by you, if first I be somewhat filled with your company. But now I go into Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. So you got three different churches here. He's on his way, I mean, to, he's ministering to them in Jerusalem. He's got a mission to do something there in Jerusalem. And at this point, you know, that's like a, the, one of the big churches. I think in this part of the story, he's actually kind of work basing out of Antioch, but he's going back to the uh, church in Jerusalem, which I'll come maybe try to explain here in a minute. But anyway, he's, he's, going to, he's working in Jerusalem, and he's writing a letter to uh, people in, in Rome, and he's saying, you know, I've got this schedule to go out to Spain. And when I get to Spain, when, I, when I'm on my way to Spain, I'm going to stop off and I'm going to come visit you in Rome. And of course, you know that the Apostle Paul's ministry was this way, like he was just constantly going. And also, I understand that he kind of had a mission as being a, uh, an evangelist. He was sent out of the church for a specific reason to go out and to evangelize. And so maybe slightly different than just like a, thinking of a whole church helping another church by our mindset, because in our mindset, uh, we are just this body, which we are, right? But sometimes we get this mindset that here's here's what a church is. The church come, comes to uh, the building on Sunday morning. They sit down in the pew, and after the service is up, they get up and they go home, and they're no longer in church. And then later on, when they come back, they come sit in the church and they sit down. So that's our church. And our church, you know, if, if we were to say this principle of one church helping another church, we would say, well, how do we help? That church, I mean, they've got their own area to reach. They've got their own uh, ministry and their own, it's like their own family, right? So I'm going to show you some different reasons, some different ways in which we can help. And I think it's kind of here in the text. First of all, here's a simple thing. We can help other churches by visiting them, visiting those churches. Now, growing up in an independent fundamental church, this is somewhat of a foreign concept because we are taught and you never miss your service. Right? And that's not a bad thing. I, I understand in a sense like you want to be faithful to your church, you want to support it, that's your family, you want to be there for it. 
But this idea that you would ever be in another church, right, to, to fellowship with them or to support them or whatever, it doesn't happen unless there's like a revival meeting. If there's a revival, then you'll go. And that is one way you can support a church, either putting on this conference or this meeting or something like that. Hey, let's, if we can work that in the schedule, we can get there, we would actually be helping them, right? So you get this idea, you know, one of the things that we can do is to actually schedule a meeting and say, hey, on this such and such a day, uh, you know, we're uh, we're going to be up, I'm going to be in Oklahoma City on March 15th, and I'm going to go preach down there, try to be an encouragement to that church. What am I doing? That's our church helping another church need somebody to preach, right? right. Uh, you know, we, we could, on the, the, whatever date that was, I can't remember, but McMurtry's coming down, and he's going to preach to us, and his wife's going to going to preach to the ladies in, in Iola, and, it's, and they're going to be a blessing. It's one church helping out another church. So they put something and say, hey, let's schedule this meeting. Let's schedule this event, and uh, we'll come preach for you, or we'll come down and be part of that uh, event or whatever like that, and that's, that's what they're doing. They're helping out. How many here have been to a big event, like a conference or something like that, outside of the state? Maybe you had to travel a little bit or, or whatever. We, really, that's, that's, that's a good thing to do. I've got a lot of friends, you know, that posted these, I mean, through, throughout the years. Uh, I know some of my friends are changing very, very quickly, but throughout the years, uh, these friends, you know, uh, good friends of mine. And so if they put on a youth rally, I feel like, man, I need to do everything I can to bring my teens there, which I don't have any teens anymore except my own literal teens. But, and then we would go there and uh, be a help to them, be a blessing to them, right? Someone puts on a... Uh, men's recharge or something. Hey, I want to go be a, a help to that, be a blessing to that, and go be a part of that. And I'm doing what I can to, to help them be a part of that. And and oftentimes we'll kind of reciprocate. You know, somebody say, hey, you know, they came out, they were a blessing to us. Now let's go be a blessing to them. That's not that's good to schedule things like that throughout the year. One church can be a blessing to another church. I'll tell you in the ministry, it's real easy, especially as pastors, to become so like uh, like an island. <laughs> Even when there's like a fellowship meeting, you're like, I don't have time, man. I got to do this, and I got to do that, and I got to do that. And you're like, I, I don't fellowship with anybody. Well, well, that's not really good. I mean, because we need each other to encourage each other. Yeah. And then even outside this, every once in a while, you guys need to hear somebody else preach because you get sick of hearing me. And every time, it's, it's good, you know what I mean, to see sure. some different people and see a different setting and see how other people do things. It's good for us, and it's good for them as churches, uh, helping out other churches. So right there in verse 24, you saw that he was going... Uh, to go to Spain. That's what he had scheduled. He had it on the uh, plan, in the planner, I guess, and he's on his way uh, to go to Spain. And we see that currently, uh, verse 25, 26, he's, he is making a journey to Jerusalem. And uh, really, if you continue to read through, you know, his, his, his schedule, you know, just kind of the way he did things, he had to have been a very organized person. You know, I don't know how they did the parchments and the scrolls and all that stuff on that time, but I think he had a prayer list. Well, you do remember when he was in prison, he told Timothy, hey, bring, you know, the, the parchments, right, and the, book, the books and the parchments. And, and so, uh, uh, so anyway, but I, I think that he had a planner and he kept details about where he had to go. I think he had a prayer list. Because if you look at everything, he's always saying, I, I mention you daily in prayer. And it seems like he must have had a prayer list. And, uh, you know, he probably had a log of everybody that he led to the Lord, which is probably huge. Can you imagine the list? You know, was, you know I got to go through my prayer list this morning. You know, you had to wake up at like 3 o'clock in the morning before you got busy and pray for all those people that he led to the Lord, right? So uh, I think he was a busy guy. And we know that in his traveling, you know, he was, they, he was just all. In fact, I think that's partly why uh, John Mark said, I can't handle this. <laughs> and he forsook him. Right, and Barnabas tried to take him with him later on, but I think he said, "Man, he, this Paul guy's wearing me out. He just got too busy with schedule. He's always, always doing stuff." Right? Look at Acts chapter thirteen. Let's go through the book of Acts just a little bit. See some of these journeys that he did. But I think he had a full planner, and uh, I think we can certainly get too busy in our life where we start, you know, not being able to do, especially particularly with unimportant things. And we get so busy with those that we can't do some of the more important things. But there's nothing wrong with having a full planner. As long as it's worked out and you kind of know why you're doing what you're doing, everything's got a purpose. Uh, but here, here's what we see in, in Acts. Like, just look at all their traveling around. The amount of, I want to just talk a little bit about the amount of effort and planning and, 
and uh, expense and all that that went into all these trips. Acts 13, let's go first at verse 4. Acts 13, 4. So they, being sent forth by the Holy Ghost, departed unto Seleucia, and from thence they sailed to Cyprus. And when they were at Salamis, they preached the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had also John as their minister. And when they had gone through the island to Patmos, uh, uh, Paphos, I mean, they found a certain sorcerer, a false prophet, a Jew, whose name was Bar Jesus. Skip down to verse uh, 13. And when Paul and his company loosed, and obviously time goes by between each of these trips, we understand that, but it makes it just jumbles it all up so fast. Now, uh, when Paul and his company loosed from Paphos, they came to Persia in Pamphylia, and John departed from them, returning to Jerusalem. That's the infamous story where John Mark leaves, okay? Uh, but when they departed from Persia, they came to Antioch and Pisidia, and went into the synagogues on the Sabbath day and sat down. And after the reading of the law and the prophets, the ruler of the synagogue sent unto them, saying, Ye men and brothers, if ye have any words of exhortation for these people, say on. All right, so uh, let's skip down to, let me see here, chapter 14. And let's go to verse 19. And there came thither certain Jews from Antioch and Iconium who persuaded the people, and having stones of all, uh, drew him out of the city, supposing he had been dead. Howbeit all the disciples stood round about him. He rose up, came into the city, and the next day, after being stoned and left for dead, and you mentioned the pain, and the, and the uh, next day, right, he departs with Barnabas for, to Derby. And when they had preached the gospel to that city and had taught many, they returned again to Lystra and to Iconium and Antioch, confirming the souls of the disciples and exhorting them to continue in the faith and that we must through much tribulation enter into the kingdom of God. And when they had ordained them elders in every church and had prayed with fasting, they commended them to the Lord on whom they believed. And so uh, uh, we keep going down there. Chapter 15, this is the last one we'll look at right now. Verse, verse 3. And being brought on their way by the church, they passed through Phinis, uh, Phinis and uh, uh, Samaria, declaring, the, converse, the conversion of the Gentiles and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. So you see them going back and just, and just traveling, man. Just, just a busy, busy schedule, right? This morning, uh, uh, my message was go, uh, going to extremes. Going to extremes. And yes, I brought up the phrase hyper soul winning. And if anybody was a hyper soul winner, the Apostle Paul was a hyper soul winner. <laughs> and, he <did. laughs> and he was busy not only soul winning, but he was busy going back and confirming them and sending guys to appoint elders, uh, ordain elders over those churches. And I mean, he was busy about the work of God. And then he would go back and he would help these churches and try to be a blessing to them in whatever way he can. Like I said, I realize he had a mission and maybe slightly different than the way we as a whole might be able to help each other. But one thing I love about this, this particular work that we've got here is that, and this, I, I, just, I love this because, like I said, most churches are made up of a building and two or three times a week people that go in and warm those pews up and then they get up and they go back home, right? Uh, if they're, if the, I'm not criticizing, like, I don't know who, which preachers are doing what. Uh, that's not my, my intention to make fun of anybody or anything like that. But I look at this crowd right here and I'm like, all these guys are soul winners, which means. You are the Pauls and Barnabases, and you see what I'm saying? You are the missionaries. You are the evangelists that are being sent out to do these things. That's why we're even in Kansas City. Knock on doors and, uh, and see people saved. That's why they sent out Paul and, and Barnabas and Silas and, and all these at different times and, and built up all these teams and went out on these teams to do these great uh, exploits. And the interesting thing, if you think about it, the amount of, I mean, it's so hard to think about that day it's because we live in a time... Uh, where travel and communication is so easy. But if you think about that, I mean, try looking at a map. Maybe you got a map in the back of your Bible or something like that. And if it shows a map of that area, and you were to chart, I looked it up on Google. Of course, it was in kilometers. I had to convert because I don't understand kilometers that well. <laughs> but it charted from Jerusalem to Spain, and that would have been about, that would have been like over 3,000 miles. 3,000 miles would be like 
dipping your foot into the Atlantic Ocean and traveling all the way to the Pacific Ocean on the other side of the United States. That's how far of a trip it was. Okay. We can make that trip in a car pretty quickly, but that'd be a long trip, so we would probably take an airplane and get there in just a, a day or two, right? <laughs> I guess a day. And, uh, and so that's nothing for us. But now think of these guys that would have to sail, you know, uh, to go to these places or just go on long hikes. We know that the Apostle Paul went on like a 30-mile hike one time just from one place to, to get to the other place. And uh, think about the amount of work and effort that went into that. And then what he said is, hey, when we're going to Spain, that's 3,000 miles, I don't know the direction, 3,000 miles, when we're going to Spain, we're going to go ahead and stop off and visit you in Rome. But if you look at the map, it's not like you can just go directly through Rome to get to Spain. You kind of have to go off like another um, hundreds of miles, maybe a thousand miles, like extra added to your trip to stop off. And it made me think about this, like when you guys went out to Arizona, uh, and you went to that conference, right? And then on your way back, you're like, you know, I think we'll go to Oklahoma City, stop in and see that work out there and, and just be a blessing to that church. And I'm thinking, that's not really on the way, right? But you say, I think I'll just be a blessing to that church. And you showed up there. And, and, and uh, of course, that's easy. You're in a car. You can go real, real fast. But imagine what they had to do. Not only that, but I started thinking about this, okay? He's right. He's in Jerusalem, or he's at least on his way to Jerusalem. And he's writing this letter. And their letter is going to Rome about a trip he's going to take to Spain. Guess what? He's not doing this over Facebook. He's not messaging them on his, on his telephone. <laughs> He has to send somebody ahead of, to actually deliver this message and say, the Apostle Paul wants you to read this. He says he's trying to work his way. It was not an easy feat to go visit other churches back then. If anybody had an excuse to say, I'm just going to stay in my hometown, you know, I'll never leave this town, never help anybody out, just me, you know, <laughs> we few, and that's, that's it, right? And uh, it would have been people in that day. That's not what he's doing. Right. He's trying to be a blessing. Everybody he knows, all his friends and brothers in Christ and all the people. Uh, you know. And, and, and here's the thing, man. We tell people, hey, we're going to Arkansas to, to go on a soul winning marathon. They're like, they don't have any churches in Arkansas? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, they got like five million tracks. <laughs> <laughs> right. You know, we passed them and we knocked on doors and we met a lot of people who, who grew up with their pastor, uh, with their, their parents, went, uh, pastored those churches and stuff like that. And guess what? Most of them are lost, just like they are everywhere in the world. Yeah, right. 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 And we had a hard time finding, a, I, I know there's probably good churches out there that are being overlooked. All right? We had a hard time finding a good church that was even interested in having soul winners give this message that we're, we're given. I don't know what, they, what they're doing, you know. I realize most of the Baptist churches out there are missionary Baptist, general Baptist. They believe a little bit different than we do, apparently. But uh, but man, uh, we not. I, I talked to this one guy. I shared this this morning. But I talked to this one guy. He's he's working on his car. We're finish, <laughs> we're finishing up with uh, uh, soul winning, and, and I got uh, Brother Richard Tanner's my soul winning partner, and uh, we're just walking back to the car. Because after every time, you know, if you're a good Baptist, you drink coffee right before you went soul winning. Now you got to go to the bathroom the whole time. Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> and so I'm like, man, we really got to get back, right? And <laughs> go to the bathroom. But there's this guy, and he's working on his car, and I'm like, man, I got to talk to him. And so I went over there. Hey, how are you doing? He wasn't interested in talking at first. And then I was like, can I just quote one scripture for you? And it's a big old guy. He's got a cigarette hanging out of his mouth. And, and I quoted him John 3, 16. And then, I, and then he said, now can I, can I ask you a question? And I'm like, sure, go ahead. And he basically started just trying to trick me up and say the Bible has contradictions, and he's trying to say how I didn't believe the Bible. And I'm trying to explain him some verses, and he's like, "Well, I already know the Bible." In fact, whenever I said, "Can I, can I uh, quote a verse?" He's like, "I probably already know it." <laughs> this is really arrogant, right? And so, I, I, and so he asked something. He's like, "I've asked a lot of past, uh, preachers this question, and, and I don't remember if he asked me or what, but I told him I was a pastor." And he's like, "Well, I was a preacher's kid. That's about the same thing." I don't know. This guy wasn't all there. <laughs> so, so, here's, so here's where I was going with this, though. So he, I was like, oh, you, your dad was a, was a pastor, huh? Yeah. And what was he? Was it Baptist? And he said, Southern. <laughs> <laughs> like, not just Baptist. This guy was a Southern Baptist. Right. <laughs> I'm like, oh, wow. He was strict, man. What did he <laughs> you know, So I'm thinking, right. every Southern Baptist I know, it's like, man, they're not strict enough. But anyway. <laughs> so, I grew up in Southern. Right. Anyway, I, I just thought that was kind of weird, but man, look, 
all these churches, I mean, I'm not kidding, like every quarter of a mile we were passing churches, we were really getting like nauseated, like, like <laughs> trying to look at all these churches as you're going down. And, 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 and that was before we even got to the city. So that's out in the boondocks, and you're like, that's right. there are more churches than there are houses. Yeah. Yep. Almost. Uh, that, that, that's a slight exaggeration, but not much. It's, it was ridiculous. But you know what? 15 people got saved that day. Amen. Uh, wow. I just, you know, 20 some soul winners all day long knocking doors. You know, yeah. there, there's a place that's in the Bible Belt of the Bible Belt. I mean, Baptist churches everywhere, Church of Christ, which uh, uh, really all these Baptist churches, I think, were just kind of like Church of Christ light. I mean, they're pretty much <laughs> teaching some of the same things. Because yeah. every door is like talking about baptism for salvation and all that. It was, kind of, it was weird. But here's the thing. We went out there and knocked doors. People got saved. You know, how did I get off on that? I don't remember. But uh, okay, so people will ask me, well, why? Why would you go to Bible Belt? I mean, isn't there a church out there that they can work with? Why would you go to Kansas City and knock doors? Aren't there a lot of churches out there, you know, that you can work with? Well, guess what? We tried to find churches that would go soul winning with us and be involved in that and be encouraged. We, we could be an encouragement, help them soul win. And it's like, you know, hey, you guys are hyper soul winning, man. You need to uh, <laughs> settle down. You know, you don't, you don't believe exactly like we do, or they would have this idea like you're just trying to steal our sheep. Right. Oh, no, we're trying to help you. Right. You know, well, why would you want something over here? You're trying to steal our sheep? Right. No, I'm really not. <laughs> you know, we, just, we got one mission, that's to knock on all the doors, see people say. That's right. And then uh, go back and try to, you know, help them to grow in the Lord afterwards. And, and, uh, and that's a biblical model. Right. Mm -hmm. If we knew more churches that were like minded and on board with that, we would be teaming up. Have big soul winning events all the time. Right? But unfortunately, we're traveling all over the country because people aren't all on the same page on this. But when we do, all of a sudden, I'm like, man, we're helping each other. I'm helping these people. We have great fellowship time. To, all of a sudden, all of those people that don't like us, calling us names, wanting to break fellowship with us, something, I don't even think about them. I think about them. helping these people, right? Yeah, what a blessing. Yeah. We're seeing souls saved and we're encouraging people. People are learning how to. People are learning how to go soul winning that have never been able to do it before. You know, yep. uh, we are setting up teams, and I and I set uh, brother, uh, uh, let's see his name, brother Jason, I think, and brother uh, Misty, and there were a couple that came down kind of late, and I was told that both of those were talking, and so I was setting teams up and everything. I was like, hey, brother Jason, you can take a break, and I said he's not a talker, but uh, but you can just take him on a team, and then yeah, we got another team. Later on, somebody said, uh, uh, Misty was telling my wife that Jason doesn't usually do the talking. <laughs> so this day kind of forced him to step up and start doing the talking. Brent said he did a great job. Amen. And uh, next time he goes out, he'll be more confident, right? And so we're building each other up, helping each other to do this thing. It's great, man. Uh, and so that's what we're doing is, is, is trying to help other people. If people would humble themselves, we could help them. <laughs> right. We could use their help, right? Right. And so, uh, uh, but people want to uh, 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 break fellowship with us. And like, anyway, that, I don't mean to preach about that. But think about all the work that he went through just to be a blessing to uh, we we you know we had the expense of going up to Arkansas. We had the expense hotels for the night. You know, go out to uh, dinner. I know we didn't have to do that, but <laughs> that's a good thing. A little bit of an expense. A lot of traveling gas to get out there and all that kind of stuff and and uh and, and you know what i got a feeling like if you could do the, a ratio between how much we invested in today's economy with how much they would invest in a trip to load up a sailboat and i don't know what there's you know, what it would cost to do that or right. go and, and feed these guys for that entire trip and, and all the, the effort that was involved just so they can go to that you know these few believers that we got over there that we know of in Rome, right? We just want, I want to stop in there and I want to see you guys and I want to be an encouragement to you. It was a lot of work we were having to do. So there we see, first of all, that uh, we can help churches simply by visiting them, uh, putting it on the planner. Hey, we got a, a set appointment to go there and then, uh, uh, you know, maybe even on the way there, stop off and help another church. It's, 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 we've seen that happen. It's wonderful. And this is exactly what the Apostle Paul did. And then we see also that we can actually help churches and contribute financially to them. Uh, you know, we see that he was actually, whenever he's writing this, what was he doing? He was on his way to help the church in Jerusalem. Look at verse 20. Oh, we've got to go back. Romans 15. 
Romans 15 and verse 25. But now I go unto Jerusalem to minister unto the saints. Okay, so what's this ministry that he's providing for them? He was originally sent out from Jerusalem, right? This was the church that kind of planted all these other churches. And now he's going back there, for it hath pleased them of Macedonia and Achaia. These are churches that he went out and was trying and, and started and planted and was trying to encourage and all that. And now they're sending resources and they're saying, uh, you know, it pleased them to for the uh, to make a certain contribution for the poor saints which are at Jerusalem. <laughs> My vision, I, I I'm not gonna I'm not gonna keep this from you. My vision is that someday this work would be so huge that we'd be like taking care of Iowa Baptist Temple in Iowa, <laughs> which could which could be a problem any day. Now. We have got old people passing off the scene, and there could come a day where they're dependent on somebody to help them out. It's possible, right? And my vision is that this church would be so like uh, you know successful, and I'm talking in the, in the right kind of way, successful, right? That we would be able to help wherever help is is needed, right? And uh, and I and I can see that certainly happening. I think that's happened a lot of times in the past, and it can continue to happen where uh, a church that's planted by one church later on becomes you know a help, help and a blessing uh, to them. So the poor saints in Jerusalem, he went to go help them. Look at uh, 2 Corinthians chapter 8. 2 Corinthians chapter 8 describes this a little bit. Here's this church in Macedonia. Macedonia, how that in a great trial of affliction and abundance of their joy and their deep poverty abounded unto the riches of their liberality. For to their power I bear record, yea, and beyond their power, they were willing of themselves, praying us with much entreaty that we would receive the gift and take uh, and take upon us the fellowship of the ministering to the saints. This uh, did that. This they did. Uh, not as we hope, but first gave their own selves to the Lord and unto us by the will of God. Insomuch as we desired Titus that he had, uh, that as he had begun, so he would also finish in you the same grace also. So he's actually using this church of Macedonia who, did, who, who was a big blessing to the poor saints in Jer uh, Jerusalem. And he's saying to the church of Corinth, hey, I want you guys to learn from their example. You guys can do this same thing. In a church, I'm, I'm not talking about a church sacrificing what is their main. It's just kind of like a family. You wouldn't just all of a sudden start helping out, out all these other families, making sure they had food and all that while your family starving. Okay, so that's not the kind of concept that I'm. I'm just saying that you get to a point where uh, you you are able to help somebody else out as much as you're able to, and you have the opportunity, you do it. And so, uh, and, and so, this is what he's saying. Now, the Bible actually talks about. And really, if you think about it, it's, it's only logical and common sense that a person who has helped you out is somebody that you would want to return and help help them out. But here's what the Bible says. I'm not talking about physically helped out. I'm talking about somebody who has spiritually helped you out. So look at Romans chapter 13. Romans chapter 13. Render therefore to all their dues, tribute to whom tribute is due, custom to whom custom, fear to whom fear, honor to whom honor. Owe no man anything but to love one another, for he that loveth one another hath fulfilled the law. Look at 1 Timothy chapter 5. 1 Timothy chapter 5. Look at verse 17. Let the elders that rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially they who labor in the word and doctrine. You know when I really started losing friends? When they started going to the website and saw I had Pastor Steve Anderson come to this work and preach. Right. They're like, oh, 
I, now I know if you would have him come to your church and preach, like you're you're obviously you know a bad guy. We can't have anything to do with you, right? Right. And so I told somebody like, all right, probably ninety nine percent of the people in this work wouldn't have even for you know they certainly wouldn't be serving the Lord. The majority of them wouldn't have even been saved had it not been for the efforts and the work that Pastor Anderson had put into yep. making videos, organizing soul winning events, doing all this kind of Amen. stuff. And you know, and I don't apologize for that to anybody. I try. I, I'm, I, I decided a long time ago. I would never. When I started listening to Pastor Anderson, and people were like, you know, just talking bad about him all the time. I decided I'm never going to be a Steve Anderson apologist. Like the Bible is my authority. Right. Amen. Amen. It doesn't matter to me what Pastor Anderson teaches or does or doesn't do. You know, uh, now there are, obviously there would be a point where it would matter enough to where I would have fellowship with him. Right. He hadn't reached that point in my eyes. <laughs> but the Bible is my, my final authority. So if somebody says, well, do you know he teaches this? And you know he teaches that? I'm going to say, I can't speak for Pastor Anderson. <laughs> I'll tell you what I believe. Right. right. But I'm not going to say, no, he doesn't do that. Right, right, and try to be like a Steve Anderson you know, apologist. I don't have any desire to do that. He's my friend. He's my brother in Christ. He's done a lot to influence me and help me learn some things and understand some things. And I've observed and worked with a lot of very zealous people who love the Lord, want to see souls saved, and they've learned a ton of stuff from his preaching material. I gave a lot of his preaching material out uh, in Arkansas because there's not a church, you know, the church that we were giving tracks out was like 45 minutes away. And so most people you're talking to, you're like, uh, hey, uh, this is a good church right here, but it's like 45 minutes away. And they're like, wow, you came all the way from there? No, actually, I came from Kansas. <laughs> <laughs> you came all the way from Kansas to give me the gospel? Yeah, that's right. <laughs> we give him a track, and we say, you know, it's like 45 minutes. But here's some good preaching you can listen to. Have you ever seen? And, and the guy I led to the Lord, like the last door we knocked on, uh, he got saved. It was, just a, it was one of those, like, you know, he's, he was just completely ready. And, and it was like God gave us that door as the last door because it was like, man, what a blessing. You know, we've been all this day, like, no, not... You know, a lot of good conversations and seeds planted, but nobody gets saved. And then that last one, uh, somebody got saved. And I could tell Brother Tan, Brother uh, uh, Richard was kind of uh, thinking, man, I wish I could, you know, end my day that way. Because I haven't seen anybody say either. Two guys walking down the street, it's like, let's go talk to them. Both of them got saved. <laughs> what a good day to end. What a good way to end the day, right? Amen. And, uh, and uh, oh, man, where is it going to help me out? Uh, so a guy that I, that I, when I knocked on that door, Led him to the Lord. He's a young guy. Very, I mean, he just he just was totally on board with everything that was said. Saw it in the Bible, believed the Bible, thought that was good stuff. <coughs> and I said, Hey, do you listen to any preaching online? I mean, do you, do you go online much and like look at YouTube? So, oh yeah, absolutely. And so I, uh, we had also had some DVDs on being Baptist. That, uh, that right. and so some of those, especially when you're in uh, Church of Christ <laughs> community, you know, that's a good one to get out. And so I, uh, so we gave him that one already, and then I gave him a YouTube card that said, uh, you know, hey, here's some good documentaries and stuff you might be interested in watching. And he looked at me and said, oh, I've seen some of those. <laughs> he's like, he's like, psychopath or reprobate, man, that's a real good one. <laughs> <laughs> I guess he didn't ever watch the end when they give the gospel presentation, which I mean, countless people have been saved through those things, right? Yeah. And so, uh, and so anyway, you know, we're a great work has been done. You know, I don't know if if, if, I, if everybody knows this. Probably everybody knows this. But brother Matt uh, Powell is coming out Saturday, and he's going to be doing some filming before a video he's putting out on uh, creationism versus evolution or something like that. And uh, uh, so he's actually going to be working with us a little bit. We've got a vision down the road of putting something together that's going to kind of expose uh, charismatic movement, but more particularly the International House of Prayer, which is right here a big hub in Kansas City, and uh, he's excited about that, so hey, I can help you guys get that started, right? So he's coming down, again, a church being a blessing to a church, and we're being a blessing to him because he wants to get more pastors on there that are interviewed, so he's going to give me some questions and talk about some of these subjects and stuff like that. We're helping each other out, but all that work, all that expense to get a plane ticket from Arizona to here, and, and you know, we're going to have to do all this stuff, but it's because souls are going to be saved. Right. It's worth it because other brothers and sisters in Christ are going to be encouraged. Right. Right. 
While other people are, are just constantly tearing you down, saying, no, you're not doing that right. No, you're a heretic. No, we don't want to do our church and everything. We got you encouraging each other to say, hey, what you're doing is a great work. Amen. Let's keep it up, right? Uh, and so, uh, uh, so what a blessing to be able to do that. Uh, but we contribute to one another, you know. When Pastor Anderson did come down here, uh, he made a video saying, hey, I want to be in Kansas City if you're interested. You know, day before the potluck and everything. And you, you guys were here. It was a big, pretty pretty full house for us, right? <laughs> it, was a big, uh, it was a pretty big deal. And afterwards, I said, hey, you know, uh, he did, He certainly did. I didn't pay him to come down here. He paid for his plane ticket. In fact, he paid for some guys from Canada, if I understood right, to come down here. He's certainly not asking for any money. Uh, but I'd like to take up a love offering. If anybody wants to contribute, you know, just give them a love offering. You know what people have thought? Like, he's done so much, put so much work into it, been a blessing in my life. They wanted to give to him. And, you know, he's thinking, like, I don't need your money. I don't need your money. Like, I just came down to be a blessing. And we're like, no, 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 we want to be a blessing. Everybody just wanted to be a blessing to everybody. Isn't that good? Yeah, yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. Churches should be, should be blessings and helping other churches, okay? But particularly those who are actually, now, we should try to help anybody. Right? We should try to help. Uh, if in the church you say, well, that's not, they, you know, they don't do enough soul winning. They don't do this or that. Yeah, but they're still my brothers and sisters in Christ. If I can be a blessing to them, I want to be a blessing to them. Yeah. But who is my first priority going to be to those who have labored in the ministry of the work? Right? And that's somebody who's put a lot of time into teaching you about spiritual things that are going to last forever. As opposed to, well, right. let me show you how to shine your shoes. Uh, let me show you how to, you know, right. how, what your suit's supposed to look like. Look, I like those things. I'm glad somebody showed me how to do those things, right? But somebody who ministered and said, let me just show you what that verse means. Let me show you, you know, you don't do that. <laughs> let me take you on soul winning and, and teach you how to do this. And, and, uh, and let, me, let me help you uh, uh, learn how to preach and learn how to do these different things. And then whenever he's ministering and investing in that way, it's like, you know, that's a lot more important than some of these little bitty things. That you know, other people tell me. I still want to be a blessing to them and return all that they've done for me. But my priority is going to be I want to help that person who's getting a lot of spiritual work done, laying up treasures in heaven, right? And so that's what I think is the clear uh, uh, principle that's said here. Let me just close by reading these few verses. Uh, you can turn there if you want, uh, but I can just read them. So it's going to be kind of fast. Philippians is first one. <clears throat> Here's what we are like. I. Again, I'm big time local church. I think uh, independent Baptist church. You know, I don't. We, I believe in closed communion. Like I don't let people from other churches come and and take the Lord's supper with the same. You know, because I think that's something that should be done according to uh, 1 Corinthians five. You know, by that that body, right? Right. And so, uh, so that's my view on that. So I'm big uh, independent Baptist uh, local church. But look, the Bible has a lot to say about working up. And yoking up with other like-minded believers, right? And we're not supposed to yoke up with non-believers, but we're supposed to yoke up with other believers. So here's what Paul says, Philippians 4, he says this, Philippians 4, 3, And I entreat thee also, true, true yoke fellow, you know what a yoke is, right? Like two ox working in the field, they put a, a, a piece of wood over their neck that, that helped them to be able to work together. You know, so if one's like kind of falling behind a little bit, the other one's kind of pushing along, it actually makes that work you know, you can get, if I understand right, you can get more work out of two yoke that are, that are, I mean, two oxen that are yoked up than you could with two individual oxen doing separate jobs. Does that make sense? Like, together, they're going to get more accomplished. Yeah, yeah. And that's the truth for Christians, too. Right? It's called synergy, right? I can do my job, you can do your job. You can say, you know, I'll take this side of the street, you take that side of the street. But for some reason, when two work together, it's like you can work longer, you can harder, you can work more efficiently because two, two heads are better than one. <laughs> okay, so he's saying, you're my yoke fellow. I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel, with Clement also, and with other my yoke, uh, sorry, other my fellow laborers whose names are in the book of life. 1 Thessalonians 3, 2. 1 Thessalonians 3, 2. And sent Timotheus, our brother and minister of God and our fellow laborer in the gospel of Christ to establish you and to comfort you concerning your faith. Philemon. Philemon 1.1 1, 1. Paul, a prisoner of Jesus Christ 
and, and Timothy, our brother, unto Philemon, our dearly beloved, and fellow laborer. Philemon 1, 24. He's listing all these different people. Marcus, uh, Ar 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 Darkus, uh, Aristarchus, Sardemus, Lucas, my fellow laborers. See, Paul wasn't just like, hey, I'm a one-man band, and, you know, uh, you know, I'll, I'll give you the crumbs that fall off of my table or something like that. He's like, hey, hey, I'm not like your head. We're fellow laborers. Right, we're man. working together. Right. And uh, he wanted to be a blessing to them, and they were blessings to him whenever he was some. Most forsook him, right? But some of them were blessings to him when he was in prison. And they'd come visit him. Hey, what do you need? What can I go get for you? And just helping him because they were true yoke fellow and that's the way it's supposed to be. Churches helping churches. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Amen. Father, I thank you for the opportunity to take that trip to uh, Arkansas and be a little bit of a help. And certainly some have, uh, other churches have invested and helped us at, at various times. Uh, not, I'm not talking about just financially, but just uh, in labor and in different ways, encouragement. And Lord, I pray that you'll help us understand that this work is so much bigger than uh, just Iowa Baptist Temple. It's so much bigger than, than Kansas. It's just a worldwide uh, mission that you've called us to do. And none of us can do it alone. So help us, Lord, to work with other people, encourage other people, and help one another to accomplish the job that you've called us to do. Not being uh, lifted up in pride, uh, not being uh, uh, selfish or, or uh, thinking that we have to do it all alone, Lord, but just working together and understanding that we're all fellow Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Amen.